Really good headphones shouldn't break the bank. This episode of Some Gadget Guy is brought to you by viewers like you. All the folks who share content on social media and the incredible generosity of my patrons at patreon.com slash some gadget guy. More info on those awesome geeks later in the video. All right, the folks at One More sent these my way to take on a test drive and share my thoughts. These are the Sono Flow Pro. And immediately we get to have a fun chat about price and expectations. Two of my favorite price to performance brands like to have these kinds of showdowns as they release products. Soundcore, and one more. A couple of weeks ago, we saw the Space One Pro release, and every time I make a video about one more, I know I'm gonna get a bunch of comments from people about how Soundcores are better. The Space One Pro are great cans, but Soundcore moved up the food chain in price, and those launched at $200 MSRP. One more took the original Sonoflow design, made some quality of life tweaks, and delivered a less expensive headphone. The original Sonoflow launched at $100, the Sonoflow Pro launched at $88. This places a nice travel can not only below the Soundcore Space One Pro, but also the MSRP of the regular Space One. I really like having the conversation about this tech, and it's not much of a contribution to a headphone review to waddle down to my comments like, but I like the Soundcore. It's okay to just go watch a Soundcore video. Here on this channel, we appreciate good competition, and we believe that there is not a reductively simple, one-size-fits-all solution graded on a single number score linear curve of gooder and badder audio products. A really good headphone should not break the bank. This is very much a refinement product for one more and not a radical redesign. A couple key improvements make a noticeable difference in performance and experience. A lot of the main bullet points are gonna be the same. It's a collapsible Bluetooth headphone which uses LDAC to get that high-res wireless badge, nice satiny finish to the plastic around the casing, and buttons to control playback and calls and volume, a USB-C port to charge, and a tiny phono jack to connect the headset cable to the cans. I wish it was full-size 3.5 millimeter. I think that would be a little bit more durable, but I honestly haven't had any issues with my original Sono Flow. Nice and light, comfortable to wear for longer listening sessions. One of the only emissions, and not something I can hit too hard at this price point, but I would love to see one more add to this, would be the ability to use these cans over the USB-C cable. You can go Bluetooth or 3.5 millimeter, plug that into an old school headphone jack. That last step, using this as a USB audio device would definitely be appreciated. And into the sound quality, I like one more tuning. They deliver a colorful sound that doesn't lean too bassy, but there's plenty of room on these 40 millimeter drivers to tweak and customize. You get 12 EQ presets in the companion app, and of course you can roll your own custom EQ too. It's a solid consumer friendly sound, nice and vibrant, it's colorful, the highs are just a touch recessed, which I think that helps keep aggressive pop tracks and sibilants from getting shrill or piercing. It's a nice, warm, comfy kind of vibe. Solid connection and quality and range over Bluetooth. I can go all over my condo over the wireless connection. The built-in DAC is very good. But of course, if you plug in the cable and you use a nice dongle DAC, they can perk up a bit. I think it's always fun to hear a headphone driven by a more powerful audio source. So with all of this being so similar, what makes this better than the original Sono Flow. I'm glad you asked. First, the move from Bluetooth 5 to 5.4 means a new radio and it's more power efficient. One more rated the original Sono Flow for up to 70 hours of playback with ANC off. The new Sono Flow Pro are rated for 65 hours of playback with ANC on. Puts them a fair bit ahead of the Soundcore Space One. The other improvement is on the headband and ear cup hinges. Now, making a collapsible headphone can be fraught with challenges trying to reduce self noise. Even my older, my more expensive Sony XM4 are kinda notorious for some creakiness as you move your head around or if you have to move your jaw. The original Sonoflow were at a price where I wasn't expecting the bestest of the best, but they were just kinda okay in that regard. Nothing has been as creaky as the Bear Dynamic Lagoons, 
but you can catch distracting groans and squeaks and creaks. A lot of companies will shore up their headphone headband design by just removing the hinges, and it makes the headphone a little less easy to pack while traveling, like going from the XM4 to the XM5. It reduces the number of moving parts that might flex or make sound. The Sonoflow Pro are significantly improved in this regard. Now, when I'm just wearing them, I hear the headband almost never, and pressure against the cups, you know, flexing muscles in my skull, moving around if I'm chewing something. These inexpensive cans have easily surpassed my XM4. Honestly, I've been racking my brain on this one for a while. Companies will put out these metrics like noise cancellation. The noise cancellation on these is now 12% better than the noise cancellation used to be. Those numbers are really difficult to verify, even in just the sort of run in the mill reviewing, even if I'm not trying to look at one specific kind of claim, it's tough because like, let's say I took these out to my favorite coffee shop and it was just a really slow time of day versus if I had taken these out on a much busier time of day, I know I'm not testing them oranges to oranges. And we have to acknowledge, like right now I'm playing all of this traffic sound here in my office from a recording. However, those traffic sounds were recorded, it's not the same as if these real life sounds were traveling through the air and hitting the microphones on these headphones, but it's kind of the best I got. So we're gonna take a listen to the original Sono Flow and then the Sono Flow Pro, see if they even sound different. And then I might also throw in my Sony's, my XM4's just to, just to see. All right, so I've got the first Sono Flow. I'm gonna put these on my head right now. And, and again, closed back headphone, just covering the ears, you hear an immediate drop in just how much sound is hitting your ear. They're isolating a little bit, but you can still hear a lot of what's going on around you. I'm gonna fire these up. They always take a second. Bum, bum, bum. Doo, doo. Battery high, battery high. Okay, so now the active noise cancellation has kicked on. And the first thing that you notice is that everything is a little bit more distant and that the rumble, the more consistent sounds have definitely been reduced. Anything that's incidental or that kind of spikes um, in, in the general soundscape here of this recorded traffic sound, that's gonna cut through. So you still have some situational awareness. Obviously, noise canceling isn't going to do a great job of completely scalpeling out everything. Yeah, it's especially in that kind of mid-low and low frequency, the rumble from my near-field monitors. But like that sound right there, that bra 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 that, that comes right through. You're definitely still going to have that. And that's one of the, um, the funny things about noise canceling is that we assume like, oh, well, this is going to help you minimize distractions, like if you're in an office or something like that. But it's incidental noises that are the things that often cut right through ANC. It's the consistent sound. And it's that. It's the stuff that you might find kind of consistently irritating or would cause you to um, turn your volume up higher. ANC should help prevent you from needing to do that. Okay, I'm going to turn these off now. Let's go to the Sonoflow Pro and let's see if that feels or seems any different. These take so long to turn off. All right, I've got the Sonoflow Pro on my ears. I haven't turned them on yet, and it's about the same. I mean, we shouldn't be too surprised that very similar ear cups are giving us a very similar passive noise reduction. Now let's turn these on. Dun, dun, dun. Bling, bling, bling. Battery high. Okay, so this is on, and, and actually I will say this is something that I don't know that I'm hearing as much as I'm feeling. It's, one more's claim is that this is 12% better noise cancellation. The first thing that I notice is that I do feel a bit more isolated. One, I'm hearing my own voice a little bit better than I was on the original Sonoflow, but if you're sensitive to that kind of stuffy ear feeling that some uh, ANC systems can deliver, I, I think you would maybe be a little bit more concerned about the immediate feel here. That being said, this is doing a much better job of kind of canceling out even some of the uh, consistent sound up in the mids. Horn honks are coming right through. That, that truck, that that truck idling sound feels a bit quieter than where we were on the Sono Flow. And everything feels just a little bit more distant, a little bit more detached. It's nuanced, but it's a very noticeable sensation that is different from the original Sono Flow. Yeah, this is definitely isolating me a bit more. And, and when a, ho a horn is like leaned on, that feels like a little bit more reduced and a little bit pushed away. Okay, so uh, we've gone through these two. 
as a collapsible travel headphone, now I kind of want to get a sense like, would an older Sony be doing any of this better? I've got my XM4s. If you can buy a pair of XM4s, they're still going to be more expensive than the Sono Flows. And let's see, has noise reduction technology improved enough where you can find this tech in significantly lower prices? But it's going to take me a while to turn these headphones off. All right, my lovely old Sony XM4s. Let me just kind of put these on my ears. I think the, the, the cups on these do a slightly better job than the one more at just that immediate passive noise reduction. But it is kind of interesting, like, as I talk, there's like a resonance in the ear cups. I feel boomier or a little bit bouncier because uh, I don't have a bassy voice, but that seems to be what's coming back from the vibrations of my, of my skull. So let's go ahead and turn these on now, and they boot up a lot faster than the one more. Power on. Bloop. Bluetooth connected. And everything just got dropped. So there's like a slightly airier feel to the XM4s. In the same way that we were talking about the Sonoflow Pro kind of pushed everything a little bit more distantly from the Sonoflow, I would say I'm getting a similar experience here. The noise cancellation seems comparable, but Sony is doing something in the way that they're trying to reduce those frequencies, the, the, the distracting sounds in my environment, that I don't feel quite so isolated, quite so stuffy ear feeling. This is just a slightly more natural effect. But again, if you were sitting next to airplane engines as constant droning sounds, the Sonoflow Pro might actually do a better job of just like hammering that noise, just getting rid of that noise in your environment. But I feel like spending a little bit more on some Sonys, maybe it's a little easier on your ears if you're sensitive to that kind of audio manipulation. And that's what makes this a fun competitive difference. We didn't need to reinvent the wheel. One more took a good daily driver headphone, made it better, and then made it cheaper. We really like to see that because a good headphone should not break the bank. So I will leave some links down below where you can find more information on one more headphones. Often when these products launch, depending on when you're catching this review, there could be some fun coupon codes and sales happening. Uh, only way to know is to click on some of them links in the description below. As always, thanks so much for watching, sharing, subscribing to the channel. I greatly appreciate everybody out there who's supporting their favorite YouTubers, especially those of you who are sharing content across social media, because that really helps us out with all of these terrible platform algorithms. And a huge thank you from the bottom of my heart as the names are scrolling by on your screen right now. These are the folks that are really helping to keep the lights on here in the Gadget Lab, my amazing patrons. Just an incredible group of geeks. They're really fun to hang out with and they get the first look as I'm going through testing new products and speakers and audio and smartphones and benchmarks. Really good people. I hope you'll check them out. Now, you know where you can find me around the rest of the internet at some gadget guy, basically everywhere, but these days I'm trying to spend a bit more time on the Mastodons, a lot less so on the Facebooks and the Instagrams, and definitely not on the Twitters, and I will catch you all on the next review.